In nonprofit fundraising and development, corporate sponsorships can play a huge role in funding your mission. But how can nonprofits leverage relationships and partnerships with businesses beyond just money? I'm Josh with Antidote, and welcome to Nonprofit Pulse, where we explore trends, insights, and resources that help nonprofits accomplish their mission. On this episode, we're joined by Lynn Margario on the topic of corporate sponsorships beyond money. Lynn founded Cradles to Crayons in 2002 to combat children's clothing insecurity, leading the organization to support millions of children and engaging over 1 million volunteers. As CEO, she oversees all strategic and operational aspects, spearheads national expansions, and is recognized as a key industry leader, frequently contributing to various media and public speaking engagements. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Hi, Josh. Really excited to be here. Yeah, so today we're talking about corporate social responsibility um, and more specifically how nonprofits can partner with businesses beyond the dollar, beyond financial contributions. Yeah, so starting off, maybe let's define our terms. Can you explain the concept of corporate social responsibility and why it's important for both nonprofits and businesses? Yes, Josh, um, corporate social responsibility is really this concept of companies stepping up to benefit. Uh, their community. And I think about community sometimes with a small C. So that might be the place that the company has employees. And then I think about um, some global companies and that C might have a capital um, to it where it's really looking at what is that global community and what is the impact that our actions as a company and um, our values are showing about how we are stewards of um, our community and stewards of our environment um, and working toward a better future for everybody. I love that. And, and it's such a um, often a, a missed opportunity um, for businesses to really take ownership of their communities. And you know, there's many challenges of, with that and, and why those decisions are made. But I think increasingly, um, communities are expecting even more uh, partnerships and more kind of a stewardship of them being uh, in their in their space, in their communities. Yeah. And, and Josh, you asked the question about why is it important to nonprofits? Well, it's important to nonprofits because we are also members of that community. And for us to perform our missions, for us to try to move the needle on the many um, areas we might be focused on. We need everybody involved. Companies are um, usually really active in that equation. Government, individuals, families, it's really our collective efforts that make a difference. Yeah, it's, yes. And, and we think about ways um, that nonprofits can engage businesses um, beyond money. What are some innovative ways you've seen um, in the past few years uh, kind of trending or, or even just good proper ways um, that nonprofits, again, can engage beyond money with businesses? Uh, so I, we, we have hundreds and hundreds of companies coming in and volunteering at Cradles to Crayons. Um, and what we are hearing from so many of those um, corporate supporters is that they want to have a place and have opportunities for their colleagues to give back and their colleagues to understand um, the values that the company cares about. Um, and also really to get to know each other uh, better. Volunteerism is a great way for people who might be on a screen like you and I are to, um, you know, to break down barriers, to, um, you know, build community within that corporate team or the, you know, the larger corporate environment while giving back at the same time. So I see volunteerism as um, one really effective um, and important foot in the door to larger multifaceted corporate partnerships. Yeah. And how can collaborations between nonprofits and, and businesses produce mutual benefits? I think that's a, a question that a lot of folks have with this topic. And do you have any examples of, of that? 
I founded Cradles to Crayons 22 years ago, and there have been some companies who have been partnering with us for over 20 years, which is mm. just incredible. That's awesome. And so when we started the conversation, it was, um, you know, me saying, hey, um, I'm a new nonprofit. We need help. And in our case, it is uh, we provide clothing essentials to children who are experiencing um, clothing insecurity. So these are children who may be without a warm winter coat, um, clothes that uh, that fit, um, shoes that they can wear. And we've got um, big warehouses where we receive donated product and we need to turn that donated product into something useful for, um, you know, for specific children. So it's never useful to have just a bag of stuff um, where you might have a boy or a girl who has a specific size and it's, you know, something that they need for the summer or it's an outfit they need for the winter. Um, so we have people come in and they spend um, two hours sorting and inspecting and packaging up outfits um, for individual children who are facing clothing insecurity. And that volunteer experience often leads to a lot of conversation in the moment while they're there volunteering about, well, how can I, you know, what is the need out there? I never heard about this issue of clothing insecurity. Tell me more. Um, and then um, after the volunteer experience, it's, okay, how can we stay involved? We had a good experience, um, so now what's next? And we love getting that question, now what is next? Um, and so for us, it might be uh, them doing a clothing drive. Um, it could be for some of our partners, like Bank, Bank of America is a company that's been supporting us for, like I said, over 20 years. And, um, and now we have uh, members of our board uh, who are from Bank of America and our different, um, our different locations. We have events at their corporate offices. Um, they hold drives for us. We do, um, you know, joint marketing together. We've done skills-based activities. And so that didn't happen right out of the gates. But as we got to know one another and as we really got to understand, here is what we're looking to do, each of us. You know, how do we build that partnership that is, you know, and I hate using this word win-win, but it, it truly sure. is that. It's providing value on both sides of the equation. I love that. And, and let's dig into the, you know, the how and what are the key elements that really make up a, uh, a sustainable and effective long-term partnership. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you've, you've been at it for 22 years now. Um, you've learned a lot. You have a lot to share. So what would you say to our listeners who are uh, excited to get started thinking of what their next steps are? What are the key elements that you would say uh, that make for a, a long, sustainable, effective uh, partnership? Well, I think it's starting out and getting that foot in the door. And so it's, um, you know, really start local and say, OK, who and what companies are near my location? and um, you know, making a list and then doing some research, do your homework up front and find out, do, does your mission resonate with um, one of their corporate social responsibility objectives or values? Um, and you have a better chance of getting a yes from that initial call if it does. There's oftentimes a more general um, kind of bucket of uh, we just want to help uh, organizations and causes that are right in our own backyard. So there's usually an, a more of an open door policy for companies that um, or for nonprofits that are really close to a corporate location. And so it's reaching out. I would say 
finding someone who knows someone in that company um, who can help with an introduction is always a, a recommended way of doing things um, because, you know, people are busy. And so if they get a referral from someone who they know, they may be more inclined to, um, you know, to answer that phone call or, um, you know, or respond to the email. But even if you don't, what is the harm of reaching out? All they can do is say no, and um, they're going to say no for now. That was one of the big lessons that I learned because I was not used to asking for um, for support. And, um, you know, once you kind of get into it, you realize, okay, that one didn't, that conversation didn't go as I would have hoped, but what did I learn from it? And then I'm now going to go back and maybe with the next company that I'm talking to, I'm going to have those answers ready for the things they are likely to ask. And when I'm ready, um, you know, I'll let a few months pass and then I might go back to that first company that I called and say, okay, I, you know, these are the answers that, um, that I can provide you with now. And would you be interested to learn more, come for a visit? perhaps do, um, you know, do a volunteer event. Um, and then that initial conversation, it's really understanding, what do you want to get out of this? Um, you know, what are your values? What are your objectives? What are your pain points in having your community engage more deeply in meeting your CSR objectives and brainstorm? Like, oh, well, maybe we've never done it before, but it is something that really could support our mission. Now, you shouldn't raise your hand to do something that is not going to be helpful to you um, just for the purpose of getting to yes. You want to be pretty disciplined to say, okay, within these parameters, um, this kind of uh, engagement or activity works for me. And, um, you know, so have so have some flexibility and really be there to listen and, um, you know, and then offer some solutions or offer some opportunities. And um, and you'll be pretty surprised and uh, and happy with how those conversations can go. Yeah, that's so helpful. And as a marketer, my mind is just racing, thinking of, you know, how how to find those organizations within your community uh, to engage. And, and you mentioned um, those who may have similar values. So looking at their website, seeing what their posted values are, seeing what they, what they may already be doing in the community. Um, but one thing that jumped out to me was maybe even looking at who's new in your community, you know, new businesses or new corporate headquarters that may have uh, entered into your community. Uh, there may be a freshness there and an openness with leadership that you're hitting it right at the exact time. Um, to say, you know, we, we don't necessarily want a donation from you. We just want you to help, as you mentioned, um, come fill boxes, come filter, sort materials. Um, and that could be a great time, a great opportunity to go and engage them as a member of the community and just increasing that goodwill and, and relationship. Yeah, and it could be, you know, we have a particular mission and model. And so we've got a place where we can invite people to volunteer. For some um, organizations, the volunteer experience may be um, not as easy to pull together. And so um, invite them over for a visit. Could they tour some, you know, could yes. they tour something? Could you do a, you know, could you go and prepare a lecture or, over, you know, uh, engage their team in a, you know, dialogue in their, you know, corporate lunchroom? Um, where you're teaching those associates about something that's really important right there in their community that they can learn about and ask questions of. Um, and I would say coming up with a volunteer experience um, is something that is tangible and, you know, it's concrete. And so it can um pay dividends, but again, only if it is something that you can do with your team in a, um, in a way that's going to benefit you and not take 
uh, time away from the mission that you actually need to um, perform. Yes, that's so helpful. And I've been on a couple of those trips, like you mentioned, just kind of a walk and see, come, come check out our operations and really enjoyed it. And everyone I was with enjoyed it. And it created an awareness of, OK, this organization is here. This is the impact they're making. Um, and it created a just a, a great educational moment. But it also you know, got me thinking about I wonder others who may want to support this organization and, and sharing that word of mouth. So I think there's just huge gains that can be made just by, like you said, a, a tour um, of your of your headquarters, of your operations, of maybe if you're active out in the community as far as um, uh, giving out items or or delivering items, just you know, even having a small group accompanying you for that or that drop off or that um, that action in the community. Yep. There are also skills based opportunities that are great ways to engage companies. Um, you know, I. I have yet to meet a nonprofit um, leader who says, oh, I have all of the data capabilities that I have in, you know, internal to my organization, or we are the world's best marketers. And so we don't need any support with our marketing strategy or our PR or, um, you know, any number of things, training. For team members, there are so many things that um, you know a corporate partner can bring to that nonprofit organization that can provide capacity that the you know that the agency just may not have on their own, or that can leverage the um, capacity that the agency does have. And those are really wonderful ways of developing relationships, not only with the company, but also specific individuals within the company, because that's another lesson I would share is that you want to have champions and advocates inside the company so that it is not just you lobbying uh, an email request into a general email um, inbox, but you having um, the opportunity to pick up the phone or go and have coffee or lunch with uh, with someone from that company and update them on what you're doing and say, hey, I we could use some support. And it may be, um, uh, it, you're just going to get a better response if it is something that you've got an internal advocate um, that is echoing or opening doors um, at a, you know, at a senior level for you. This podcast is brought to you by Antidote. With more than 13 years of serving nonprofits, churches, ministries, campaigns, and schools, Antidote has processed billions of dollars in donations. That experience has guided us in building tools that save your organization time and money. Join more than 30,000 organizations and increase giving today. Learn more at antidote.com. A-N-E-D-O-T dot com. Antidote. Save time and money with powerful giving tools. Yeah, so that makes me think of challenges. So maybe let's get into what are some common challenges that, that nonprofits are going to face when engaging um, these for-profit businesses and even securing it, right? So, you know, engagement being the first step, but then, you know, putting ink on paper, moving that along and, and maybe even beyond the first year, right? Um, maybe the first year there was a, you know, it was easy to engage and it's easy to secure, but now you're in year two or year three and you're thinking, hey, I want to increase this. I want to do something more. What are some challenges you've seen uh, around those those questions, it takes time. Um, you know, it it really does. What I what I have found is that it is a relationship. It is not a once and done. Um, it is something that you need to commit to. And um, you know, whether you're the leader of that nonprofit organization or you've got someone on your team who's really working on keeping the relationship going and cultivating, um, really having ongoing conversations. So those touch points may be once a month. They may be, you know, if you can't, if you can't sustain that, maybe it's once a quarter. Um, and, uh, and so it's a long, it can be a long game. And, um, you know, you may, it, 
feel success in getting that foot in the door and then building on it because it's, it's, it's like any relationship. You're getting to know one another. You're building trust and trust takes time and it takes having, um, some good experiences. And then if an experience goes sideways, because they always do, um, at least, you know, parts of it, really having an honest debrief and making time for a debrief conversation to say, hey, how did that go? Was that a good experience for you? What can we do? What should we repeat? What what can we do better the next time? Um, or what are some ideas that you might have that we didn't think about in this, um, you know, in this first go? I love that. And it's a perfect segue into uh, measuring what matters and, and how can you measure that? You know, you mentioned what, what worked, what didn't. What are some, some ways that nonprofits can measure that partnership for impact? Um, and, and what should they share in that? Maybe frequency, how often, quarterly, annually? Um, what would you say? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's about setting expectations up front. For some of our partnerships, there is, uh, or volunteer engagements, it's, okay, we have a team that is, you know, 50 or 100 people, and we're looking to um, have an engagement where uh, we've got this amount of time, and um, we're really looking for it to be a meaningful experience for our team members. And so what we'll do in advance is to say, okay, given those parameters, here's the sort of impact that you can have. And so for us, it equates to um, how many packages uh, can we provide to children at, as a result of this relationship. And so we go in, we say, this is what um, you're bringing to the table. This is what we're going to bring to the table. And let's see how we do at the end of it. So we're sharing some expectations up front. And then we loop back at the, um, you know, after. Uh, the event or that skills based engagement and review what did we what did we want each side going into this, and how successful were we in um, in realizing those expectations um, so the more and and it doesn 't have to be complex right it 's like what can you simply track um, and uh, you know and um, provide back in a simple way so that it can be easily communicated at that uh, at the end of the volunteer experience or the um, collection drive or that skills based um, engagement that that you've undertaken together. And I love how you mentioned setting expectations up front, because I think that's a that's a huge part of success in this in that. So you don't get a quarter a year down the road and you're reporting back, hey, we're really excited. Here's our impact report. And they feel underwhelmed or they feel like, oh, I thought we were doing more. I think that's just huge to set up front of this is what we hope to accomplish. Um, and then partnering with them too on, on what are those, those key metrics that they want to see. Well, and Josh, in some ways, it's easier too to execute that. When you think about an impact report or an annual report, it can feel pretty daunting. Um, but if you are looking at it in the moment and saying, okay, what can I share back? There's, there, there are data points I can share back. Maybe there are photos, um, or video that we can put together. Um, and then, wow, social media, that's another opportunity. What can we do, um, to share what this experience has been like? Cause that, again, is going to provide mutual benefits, going to help raise awareness about the organization, but then also, you know, the company is able to spread the goodwill and share that they are active in their community. Um, we had uh, NBC Universal had this great program where they were um, working with local videographers um, uh, in a number of their, in the cities in which they have a, a presence. And they were pairing them with nonprofit organizations who wanted their story told. And so 
we got this beautiful PSA that was created by this wonderful, you know, agency. Um, and then NBC Universal was airing our PSA. So it, it was something they were seeking to do to, um, work with these, you know, video production companies, um, and do some skills based work with, with them elevate that work, but then also pulling in other agencies that, you know, um, who they were supporting. And, you know, so that was a really terrific experience of how something um, maybe non-traditional can, yeah. um, can really have, uh, have big impact. Um, I'll, Think about another an, an, another organization or another company that we partner with. It's called First Quality, and they have a diaper brand, um, Cuties, and they are um, they were really looking at how can we leverage our um, presence and the um, you know the diaper distribution that we have to benefit an organization that is addressing clothing insecurity and, and diaper need. And we have now a multifaceted partnership with them where they're providing us with financial support. We've got regular volunteer engagement with their associates, and we are also working together um, to promote the partnership. And, um, and so there are all kinds of creative ways that, um, once you, it, it, you know, again, it doesn't start at day one, but once you start learning about what's important to each party, um, you know, the, the opportunities are pretty incredible. That is such a beautiful story. And just thinking about how that brand wants to serve families and children. And that's exactly what your organization wants to do is serve families and children. And it's just such a, a perfect yeah. match of values, even though one's on the nonprofit side and one's on the for-profit. Um, it's just a, a beautiful kind of synergy there between the two organizations. Yeah, so looking for, uh, towards the future, we like to talk about trends and, and, and insights and resources, but looking towards the future, what, what trends do you see coming down the horizon for how nonprofits can relate to for-profit organizations, um, especially around the corporate social responsibility, that idea of partnering beyond the dollar. What trends do you see? What, what, what do you see on the horizon? So Josh, what we're, what we're seeing is really an increased focus and desire to engage um, associates in their community. And that takes all sorts of, uh, of forms. Um, we mentioned offsite volunteer experiences. There are opportunities for virtual experience as well. So if you're a mentoring organization or you do tutoring or you're doing financial literacy or any of these sorts of, um, uh, you know, if your mission can be delivered virtually, that's a great way to engage people in a way that, you know, five, 10 years ago, we weren't seeing much of. So I'm seeing now just like what we're seeing in the return to work, um, you know, it's a hybrid model. There are, there's a desire for in-person, like real life community um, engagement that's happening at an offsite location or it's happening at a corporate location as they're trying to get, encourage people to come back in the office and be happy <laughs> to be back <laughs> in the office. Um, the, the virtual piece um, you know, there's so much happening with uh, data right now, artificial intelligence, social media, and, you know, companies are often much better positioned than nonprofit organizations to be able to uplift um, the, the work and the data needs and the, you know, the data capabilities of a nonprofit partner. So kind of leaning into that, um, in a, you know, in a powerful way. And then also just the, inf maybe more informality or less formality in some of the communications. Like, you know, as we're doing right now, sitting in front of our computer screens, it's, you've got, you know, phones and um, that you can take anywhere and do a quick, quick interviews, post that and, um, 
you're you're generating awareness, you're getting people, um, you're getting people's attention. And so there's so much unfolding right now that it's um, that it's really exciting. If we were here talking five years from now, um, I'm sure the world is going to be a much different place. Yes, and it, it is so exciting, all the opportunities. I love that example about the helping on the data side. You know, a, a company may have a data team inside that could provide really helpful, valuable information to their local nonprofit. I've not heard about that type of partnership. And I think that's just super smart and exciting. And I have one. We have one. There's something called KPMG um, Data Citizens with a Purpose. And so um, we have been working with them to try to better understand our um, the need out in the community and our impact. And, um, you know, they've just got models and tools and expertise and systems that we couldn't even imagine um, having at our organization. And so that's been, a, you know, that's been a really exciting partnership. And TJX is a TJX is another um, great example of, um, you know, they're right in our backyard here in um, in the Boston area. And, you know, we're an organization that's all about getting stuff to or getting clothing into the hands of children who um, who need that clothing. And so getting they've been terrific in helping us with our procurement um, strategy, thinking about our supply chain, um, you know, how to just be more efficient in our work. And so, again, it's unpacking how do you do your business and who can who is similar, who does similar work in the for profit space and what can you learn uh, together? Absolutely. And, and this has been such a, a helpful episode for our audience. And it's just got me thinking about all the possibilities. And and you mentioned AI and uh, data and and just that consulting piece of just being able to come in and say, Here's what you should be doing in your operations, or here's a tool that you know we we recommend that you use, and we'll help you set it up and how to use it, even if it's in house. Um, that's that's so helpful, and and I hope our audience is uh, encouraged by that to to really seek out those relationships, as you mentioned. And and Josh, I would say um, that these sorts of partnerships. I know that we are talking about the sort of non money corporate relationships. This is a foundation upon which that financial support can sit. If you find multiple points in common, your shared values, um, engagement opportunities that align with what you need, what the company is seeking to do, the financial support um, often comes after you've each invested some time in that um, in that engagement. So never be shy about asking for funding. That's helpful because I think a lot of folks might be hesitant to ask that. But as we know in in uh, donor behavior and, and even sales, right? People buy from people they like. People um, when you have a relationship with someone, you say, "Hey, we work so well with with Lynn. We would love to make a donation." You know that. That wasn't at the forefront of the relationship and it wasn't part of even engaging them necessarily, but it did come because of how people give and buy just that those behaviors. But but not again, not being shy about it right at the, you know, I would say out of the gates, mention it. Again, all they can do is say no or, you know, well, it, we may not give you as much as you wanted, but we're going to start here and then grow that over time. So one question we ask um, every guest on the podcast at the end is, if you were standing on stage in front of a thousand nonprofit leaders and you could share one thing uh, about your topic, today we're talking about corporate social responsibility, you know, beyond the dollar. What would you say, Lynn, to the audience? Just kind of one, one sentence. Corporate partnerships have been invaluable to cradles to crayons and they can be invaluable for you too. Love that, love that, awesome. Lynn, thanks so much for coming on and sharing uh, all this just incredible advice. And again, 22 years, congratulations um, to your organization and, and to you for leading it so well. And um, 
As always, folks can check out the show notes, learn more about Lynn, um, learn more about her organization. And just again, Lynn, thanks for coming on and sharing about this. Thanks for having me, Josh. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share or leave us a rating interview wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, head on over to nonprofitpulse.com to sign up for our monthly newsletter, as well as check out all the links and resources in the show notes. We'll see you next time.